Welcome everyone, Marcelo is my name. I'm the niche fragrance collector, big fan of niche perfumery. I love ambery, oriental style, warm kind of fragrances. Let me just say this was really hard. Um, I, so these are the seven that I finally sort of settled on. Behind me, believe it or not, are the contenders that were also part of this lineup. So this table was full of perfume. I was smelling different things and sort of slowly whittling it down to what you see before you. Now, a few things before I begin. There are some elements that I've been incorporating in other videos, which I'm now all bringing together. Number one is, if you like, so as I talk about a particular fragrance, I'm gonna show you other fragrances that are similar so that if you like those, then I'm gonna say that these particular ones will resonate with you if you're not familiar with them. The other one is, I always say that, that perfume is genderless, and meaning that if you're a man and you like wearing florals, I think that's a great thing. I mean, all of these before you, and there are some floral fragrance here, are all mine. So my wife does wear these too, but ultimately, these are, these are my fragrances that I like using. If you're a woman who likes uh, woods, much sort of heavier notes, that are, I guess, traditionally more masculine, then cool. So what I'm gonna do to make it easy, if something is a little bit more feminine leaning, meaning it has more florals, you'll see it here. If it's a little bit with a few florals, then you'll see that the marker will move to here. And then obviously the same will apply if it's more masculine leaning or woods and things of that nature. The last thing is the fragrance wheel. I'm a big believer of the Michael Edwards fragrance wheel because if you know where you like to live, and I've discovered that I love oriental ambery style fragrances, then it makes it super easy to know that once I show you that this falls in amber or woods or dry woods or whatever it may be, you'll know that this is a fragrance that will most likely resonate with you. All right, let me begin. So the first one that I want to put forward is more masculine leaning. This is, I would say, a classic fougere. Very bright, citrus sort of opening, has a aromatic heart, lavender, things of that nature, and then it settles down into woods, oak, moss, that style. For those who have been hiding, living under a rock, and are not familiar with Viking, this is one that I would strongly recommend to go out and include in your fragrance cabinet. Now, the only thing with Viking that may destabilize you a little bit. For me, I've gotten used to this now, but it does have a very unusual clove, I was gonna say medicinal, but it's not medicinal, but it has a very distinct clove opening. There is a clove, I believe in the heart of it, and that clove pops out really fast. I've, I've become so used to it, I don't smell it anymore. I did a video on this, and if you wanna look at that, that was very early on when I just got Viking. So you'll see my earlier responses to this particular fragrance. What it does, it plays with a cool and hot notes. So that's fire and ice, and it's in reference to that Scandinavian landscape of volcanoes and glaciers and things of that nature. So those warm notes of the pink pepper, the clove, that rose that also gives it a warmth with those cool notes of lavender and lemon and peppermint. So this beautiful balance between that fire and ice in that fragrance. The fragrance falls under an aromatic, and even though aromatic, sometimes we associate to more summery brightness, this as a winter fragrance is pure magic. I wear it on cold days, it works perfectly on me. Believe it or not, actually, I feel like it, it radiates better in cooler weather than in actual heat. For some reason, I did wear it in heat, I wasn't enjoying it as much. It was a little bit, maybe the clove was really over, was dominating it too much, and it was just sort of blowing my brain a bit. But as a strong masculine fragrance, fantastic. One thing that I've also noticed, because sometimes I find there are some fragrances that, um, as a man, I love wearing, but I've noticed that other men like smelling it, and not necessarily women, or the women respond. Whereas when I'm wearing Viking, I find that the women in my family, in particular my wife, picks up on this particular fragrance. Fougere is a classic male star fragrance that just works on a man. I find that the sillage on this is moderate, it actually has a beautiful push, and I get about six to seven hours on this fragrance without a problem at all. I can smell it very comfortably, and it also projects really nicely for those around me. What I love, another component that I love about this fragrance is that it's non-linear. So where you are in the opening, and if you are new to it, that clove as a man does for some reason destabilize you a little bit. So if you're new to the actual fragrance, 
you'll find that that opening will then dry itself down and then as you move into that dry down it becomes very wood like very oak moss the lavender is playing a big part in there i really love the creeds in my in my collection i find that they're just really well constructed masculine fragrances the short in this short list i had between viking and royal oud and i felt that in the end i feel that that viking just has a different edge. It's, it's a fragrance, it's a, it's, a, it's a perfume that I don't smell regularly. Not that I, I mean, Royal Lute is amazing. It does have a cedar-like quality to it, whereas I find that Viking is so complex, so beautifully balanced, there's a lot more going on, and hence why I think it's a fantastic winter fragrance to recommend to everyone. Viking. More masculine leaning, so now let me switch across. It's a little bit more for the girls. There's a particular note in here, and we'll talk about it in a second. But let me just say... Let me just say that, yes, it might have a floral note in there, and it's a rose, by the way. But this is a fragrance that I just love. I love wearing it. I love wearing it. My boys, uh, my, the, the, the boys of my family, who are actually men, I mean, they're in their mid-20s. They love wearing this fragrance. Sandra, my wife, loves wearing this fragrance. I was actually wearing this, so let me just say, the projection on this is fantastic, phenomenal. Really has great push, awesome sillage. I was wearing this, a uh, friend of mine, his wife, she's like, which is a bit weird, I guess, but anyway, his wife said, my gosh, you smell amazing. What are you wearing? I had the husband reach out to me and say, dude, I wanna buy that fragrance for my wife. She cannot stop talking about it. As a feminine fragrance, fantastic. I can smell on her whenever she's wearing it. As a feminine fragrance, beautiful. But as a masculine fragrance, it works amazing. The one thing about this fragrance is that it has rose in the opening and rose in the heart. But it's a rose that is unusual. I was like, well, not unusual because it is a rose style fragrance, but it's, it's really unique. It's really divine. It's been, it's been done in such a beautiful, beautiful way. There is coffee in the heart. For me, I don't pick up the coffee. If anything, I pick up like a raspberry, like a berry sort of tinge. There is no raspberry. There is no berry in the actual fragrance. So it, maybe it is the coffee that's creating its own, its own scent vibe. I have coffee fragrances, so I have one by Fueguyo called Arabica. Now, that is a bitter coffee. It's like a roasted coffee. So even though it's listed as one of the notes in this particular fragrance, that coffee, I mean, it's, it's something quite divine. And it's not a classic rose fragrance. I also love, I mean, I'm a big fan of rose as a note within my perfumes. One of them that I absolutely adore is Radical Rose, but that is a very rose-like fragrance that almost feels so radical rose almost feels like i've picked a rose and i can smell the different facets of it whereas here it, it's almost dusty it's powdery there is a very slight rose floral tinge to it but there's a sweetness there's a, a berry like sweetness anyway it's divine on skin on skin this particular fragrance is magic so where i like to wear it is on cool days Cool evenings, it wears fantastic. As an office fragrance is phenomenal. I find that the longevity on it is between seven to eight hours. And as I mentioned, the sillage on this is very, very good. I'm getting a moderate push on it. And, and the projection on it is fantastic. It lasts on me really well, moves with my body. It's just magic. It's actually by the company. So for those who know the work that I've done with Boyce 1920, Italian company, it's like an offshoot from their brand called Olfatology. The names within the actual uh, fragrance are in celebration of different rivers from around the world. And what they're doing is they're leaning towards those particular rivers and uh, I guess some of the core ingredients in that area. In this case here, Yodoa is a river that runs through Peru and Brazil and hence why it's celebrating that, the coffee note essentially. I don't get coffee though. <laughs> I, I mean, I've read some comments and people say, oh, this is a beautiful rose coffee fragrance. I'm like, man, they've got good noses because I, I pick up a berry-like sweetness to this. Allora. So let's go back to boys. I mean, again, mind you, I was in a masterclass for Amouage as they released the library collection. And in that class, there were a number of, of women and they were all saying that they loved Royal Tobacco for themselves. As a tobacco, now I'm a big fan of tobacco perfumes, I have to say. I've got a big collection of different tobaccos. 
Not that this is the best, but this is the most robust. This is deep, sensual, rich, opulent. It takes the tobacco note to a whole new level. This is the latest release from Amouage. When I first smelt this, honestly, it took me back. I'm like, whoa, I, I wasn't ready. For those who are familiar with tobacco fragrances, Naxos and things of that nature, you're like, I know what it's about. You need to spray this. So if you like tobacco, the power that this fragrance has is something else. What I love about it, it starts off with a herbal-like quality to it. There's a basil in the opening. There are other sort of balsamic style of notes in there. I know that licorice is also a part of this particular fragrance. I'm not going to spray this one because it is powerful. It is powerful. So I, I do plan to spray some on skin shortly. But right now, if I were to spray this, it will just overpower everything else. As a, as a, as a projecting kind of fragrance, projecting is a... As a fragrance that projects, it is full. It has a beautiful, full sillage on this. The projection on is enormous. You wear this, people know. I don't recommend that this would be an office style of fragrance. Um, it would definitely, st I mean, if you like to go, I am here, then yeah, wear this at the office and people will, they'll actually, as you park your car, they'll, oh, Rick is here. Um, I can smell, or it could be Bethany. So if some females like big, strong fragrances, this is definitely one of those. For me, this is my going out fragrance. So if I'm going to a place where there are gonna be lots of bodies, uh, if I'm going out for dinner or anything of that nature, going to a party, Royal Tobacco will, I'm telling you, they, it will herald your presence into that room. The most amazing thing about this fragrance is that it actually has frankincense in the opening and it also has it in the base. Now, frankincense, for some people, it, it's, it, it's too much in that it's very, and when I say some people, I'm saying my wife. Because when she smells incense, it reminds her of a church. And she finds that those incense notes are a little bit, um, well, she doesn't enjoy them as much. I feel that being that it has in the opening and in the base, this is not an incense fragrance. It is so beautifully blended. If anything, I still feel like the herbal components of this particular fragrance, that licorice quality that it has, the tobacco that's in there, the earthiness in there, with a little bit of that smokiness and that incense-like quality, it's just, it weaves itself so beautifully. This is probably the most complex tobacco fragrance that I've ever smelled. And mind you, and actually on complex tobacco fragrances, one that I absolutely love, is Or de Soray. Now that is a fruity tobacco fragrance, super complex. This one here would be its masculine twin brother, essentially. I mean, it's the shape of this bottle, you know, it's just Amouage do fragrances really, really well. Cecile Zorican is the perfumer for this, and for those who are familiar with her work, she is incredible. She really is just an incredible master perfumer. I know she's done a lot of work for Amouage, and in this one here, I, I just feel like she's taken it to another level. Um, the king of tobaccos. I was gonna say, I didn't say that, but honestly, um, if you like tobacco fragrances, if you feel that um, the, it, it is a lot more robust, so don't think Naxos. Uh, if you do like rich, opulent, woody, resinous kind of fragrances, then Royal Tobacco is one that, yeah, as a winter fragrance, a, a cool day, a very a cold day, just this will be its own internal heater. It's just glorious, glorious fragrance. Big recommendation. If you do like that tobacco note, but you want a bit more florals in there, then I would recommend to you Tobacco Rose. This is by BDK. Now BDK, they make another exceptional fragrance called Passessoir, which when my wife wears that fragrance, oh my gosh, I, it just, I, I just, I'm intoxicated by Passessoir. Just, that is one fragrance that is just divine. It's pure seduction. Another pure seduction is Tobacco Rose. Now, it's interesting that I, f I feel that well, it, it states it in the name, tobacco and rose. So you know that those two ingredients exist within the fragrance. However, this is just a beautifully complex, fruity, floral, 
tobacco style fragrance. It doesn't go to an earthy place. So unlike Royal Tobacco, it does have a very earthy, resinous, smoky sort of component to it. Whereas this one here for me stays in a very, uh, not light, but it has a floral, ambery component. It has an ambery warmth to it. I love wearing this. So I know that this one is a little bit more female leaning, but I, I love wearing this. It, this is a fragrance that over cooler weather, it just makes me pure happiness. Or it makes me pure happy, pure happiness. Just pure happy, it just makes me happy. Whenever I've worn it, I always feel that there's a peach vibe to it, a very subtle peachness to it. I later discovered that there is plum in the base. And I think obviously that plum, or that fruitiness from the plum, is giving it a whole new dimension or a different dimension. This is a fragrance that on skin just becomes something completely else. Something completely else. <laughs> what kind of language you speak in there, son? This is a beautiful, intimate, seductive style of fragrance. The, even though it has rose in it, the rose never overpowers any of the other components in the fragrance. If anything, the balance in here is exceptional. So between the, the fruitiness of that plum, the earthiness of the tobacco, the floral components of the rose, it's just this beautiful blend together. So my wife and I love to go dancing. I wore this as my fragrance for the evening. Now, before I left, my son had walked in. I was sitting outside on the deck, getting a bit of sunshine before we left. And he was, and I'm not exaggerating, probably about five, maybe 10 meters away. So let's say five, five meters away from me. And instantly he said, the perfume you're wearing is awesome. Which one is that one? Tobacco Rose. That evening, as we were dancing, saying hello to people, so I was now sweating, and I knew that this was going to happen. As I warm up, Tobacco Rose begins to bloom even more on my body. A friend of mine came up to me, Latinos, hugging and kissing all the time, and the first thing she said is like, oh my gosh, your fragrance is beautiful. So being that it has a more feminine lean, she didn't feel that it was a feminine fragrance. I feel, again, that the tobacco in it, earthiness component to it, does keep it in that beautiful balance. Notes like patchouli, there is a chocolate accord in here. There's also cinnamon. So I feel like all those particular notes don't allow the fragrance to go too deep into floral or it doesn't allow the fragrance to go too deep into a tobacco style fragrance. As a fragrance for a man, fantastic. As a fragrance for a woman, absolutely divine, just glorious. All right, let me move on. I feel like we've covered off some pretty good ground with these guys here. Nice masculine, beautiful feminine, two tobacco fragrances, one very masculine, one a bit more feminine leaning. This one here, I'm gonna deem it as uh, unisex with a slight masculine sort of uh, push across. I do know that there are a lot of women who actually love Incense Suave. This is by the company called Matier Premier. Now, for those who uh, might be new to Matier Premier, the perfumer is Aurelien Guichard. Aurelien Guichard, say it properly. And he is an incredible perfumer. I've, I've said before, I've done some reviews on both Sandalwood or his um, Santal Austral and also Radical Rose. What he does is that he loves to grab one core ingredient and then support that core ingredient with other notes that allow that, that core ingredient to really shine. In this case here, the incense he has taken from Somalia. Incense in itself, um, it, it, there, there is no such thing as an incense. It actually is derived from resins, either from frankincense, from myrrh. And in this case here, the, the sweet incense that comes from Somalia is opoponax, a sweet myrrh essentially. If you're not sure about incense perfume, as a pure incense fragrance, Ensemble Suave is where it's at. On opening, it actually is a Venezuelan coffee. So you're getting a very robust, roasted, aromatic coffee note coming through, which supports the heart note of that Somalian incense that's in the fragrance. I don't get a lot of the heavy sort of uh, incense components to it. There is a, an aromatic quality to it. I feel that as it begins to dry down, it does go into that smoky, resinous 
uh, familiar territory that we know when it comes to an incense fragrance. There is a sweetness in here. Oh, the sweet myrtle, the Apopanax, has a sweet like quality to it. And the way that Aurelian has accentuated that even further is by not only including vanilla bourbon, but also putting in Ben's wine. For me, this fragrance has 10 plus hours. I wear it for the day comfortably. I do feel that it starts off as a moderate, but it does come down to a body. The sillage on this is moderate. Uh, but as I said, after maybe three or four hours, it does come into more of a, a body scent on me, which is not a bad thing. For me, I like wearing them, but not everyone in my family, my wife, enjoys if I'm wearing an incense fragrance. I have another incense fragrance, which I won't name. She does not like it on me because it projects way too strong. Whereas I can be wearing En Son Suave. I'll wear this as my day fragrance. So of an evening when I get home, I'm still smelling it on myself, but it's not really projecting itself too, too broadly. However, I was, we were having a family gathering. My son came in for a hug to say goodbye. And the first thing he said was, I love the perfume you're wearing today. Instantly I said, what are you smelling? And he says, a vanilla-like incense fragrance. So when it dries down, it does go into that smoky, resinous, incense quality of it, but it has this beautiful, vanilla-like quality to it, not gourmand. It retains the incense uh, personality of what fragrance is about. Boom. Allora. Okay, so not that I've left the best two for last, but, but I, I, these two, I, I, well, this one here I've just, I just got recently. Um, but it's become one of the, the local favorites, and I'll tell you more in a second. But I love wearing Oud Satin Mood. If I'm going somewhere and I want to make a statement, if I want to know, if I want to let people know I am here, Oud Satin Mood is my secret weapon. Now you would think that I would wear Royal Tobacco. The problem with Royal Tobacco is it really states I am here. I mean, it almost like, you know, like you know the whole you know, the whole thing uh that's what royal that's what i'm saying i don't i don't feel that it's a it wouldn't be an office fragrance it's definitely an awesome fragrance to go out in where you can really project whereas if i'm going to the office or if i'm going to a meeting if i'm going to a wedding then i love wearing oud satin mood so i went to a wedding a little while back it was an outdoor wedding so it gives you an idea that it had awesome projection on it and I was getting more compliments than the bride and groom together, and they looked gorgeous. A young couple, they were absolutely stunning. And yet, people couldn't stop talking about the fragrance I was wearing. Oud Satin Mood is just, it's just divine. It is a statement maker. It is, the, the balance in here is, is just beautiful. It's just beautifully balanced with all these different components. Oud can be a fragrance note that can be a little bit off-putting. If the perfumer is using a very fecal-like strong oud, then yeah, I mean, that's what's coming through. In this case here, I'm gonna put on skin. Maison Francis Curjon, did I say that right? He's using a, an oud from Laos. So he's using a Loatian oud. Very smooth, present. So it's definitely present, but it's not, it's not fecal, it's not overpowering. It doesn't take away from all the other notes that are in there. So there is a warmth, vanilla-like quality to it. Francis has accentuated that vanilla note even further by including Ben's wine in the base. It has a honey, vanilla-like quality. So almost, almost to the point of being caramel-like. On skin, on card it's beautiful, but on skin, when it begins to play with your own body chemistry, the oud, the rose, and that vanilla accord, just pure magic. The one thing about this fragrance is that it is linear in its profile. Normally we think of the pyramids opening, blah, 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 blah. I mean, Viking is the classic example of that, of that beautiful opening, vibrance, and then the aromaticness coming through and then the woods in the bottom. I find that Oud Satin Mood is linear in its approach. What you're smelling, the Oud note, the rose note, that vanilla, Ambery Accord is what you're getting all the way through. I find that the longevity on this is just next level, 12 plus hours. You'll be wearing this, so you can wear it in the morning. The next morning when you get out of bed, you change, you shower, put on some fresh clothes, you'll be smelling Oud Satin Mood. Awesome longevity, amazing sillage. The sillage on this, it just pushes. The projection is fantastic, as I mentioned. I was at an outdoor wedding 
people were smelling the oud satin mood that I had on. Now I don't blind buy. That's not something that I, that I like doing. I, I'm a big believer in testing. I want to see how the fragrance plays on my skin before I go out and, and, and I was going to say, before I go out and spend my money. Um, all these fragrances, they're not cheap. Um, and so I don't want to, uh, I, know that there's a, I know that there's a thrill in blind buying. Okay, I'm giving you a big story. I blind bought, all right? Um, I actually blind bought Torino 22. In Australia, I always call Australia one of the colonies. Um, we don't get access to a lot of fragrances or it takes a long time. So there are some awesome brands that are out there that still haven't landed here in Australia. Uh, a fragrance may be released in the US or Europe and then maybe six, 10 months later, we're getting it here in Australia. So Torino 22 came out probably about three weeks ago. I've got Torino 21, absolutely love it. And I, I blind bought. Uh, and now after I did it, I was super nervous. I'm like, what am I doing? This is pure insanity. Why am I doing this? Is it a good fragrance? I don't know. This fragrance is off the hook. I, I absolutely, I have been falling in love with this so much of late. I cannot stop wearing it. And this is a fragrance that my wife absolutely loves wearing. This is a fragrance that my son, he comes over to the office. He's been actually wearing this too. His, his wife, who's very particular with fragrances, are, uh, and I love that uh, his wife is very, um, she says how she feels. If she doesn't like it, she'll say it. She won't sort of mince words too much. Uh, and there are some fragrances that he loves that she's like, dude, get out. <laughs> either, either go have a shower because there are no hugs for you today. This is a fragrance that she loves on him to the point that she'll say, you should buy it. But again, in the colonies, we don't get this until, I don't know, 10 months from now. What I love about this fragrance, the key note in here for me is the saffron. So on the opening, there is a saffron note. Now saffron has this dual quality to it. The saffron is used to accentuate leather, but it actually, it's a very soft leather. So it's almost like, I would call it a suede. And for me, the opening has a suede-like quality to it. There is also a, like a herbal um, menthol brightness to it. That's provided by the eucalypt. There is a eucalyptus uh, note in here. But there's also mate, and I love mate. I'm Argentinian. It has mate in the heart, and I find that mate supports the herbal notes in the fragrance. I find that this one is one of those super beautifully complex fragrances. This is something that where it begins and how the, the fragrance or that opening component of the fragrance and makes you fall in love, it then begins to evolve and weave and then it goes into a whole different place. And I find that the second part of saffron is a sweet honey-like component to it. It brings a warmth, it brings an ambriness to the fragrance. This for me is, I, I honestly, I, 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 I don't blind buy, but I feel like I found the pot of gold on my first blind buy in Torino 22. It's one of those fragrances that has quickly become one of the favorites within my family. If I could define it quickly for me, this is a sweet, ambery, woody fragrance with a slight leathery accent to it. And again, all provided by that beautiful saffron. If you have Torino 21, it is nothing like it. So don't, I mean, I made the mistake when I opened up the, the uh, in my, that video that I created, I actually sprayed Torino 21 thinking that it would be a companion to it in the sense of another sort of vibrant, aromatic style of fragrance. They are two separate fragrances. Torino 21 would be a fantastic, summery, bright, going out, vibrant, fresh fragrance. This is a beautiful, ambery, warm, woody style fragrance. For me, this has become my day fragrance. I, I, uh, this is something that I would wear on a cooler evening or a cooler day, wear it all day long. As an office fragrance, fantastic. The sillage on it, I find that it's moderate, but it doesn't, it never comes down to a body scent. I find that the longevity is eight plus hours without a problem. One thing that I've discovered with this fragrance, it has a wonderful, it comes back around. It has this 
this very, I always call it a sneaky comeback because just when I feel like the fragrance has left me when I was first testing it, I'm thinking, oh, there it goes, the fragrance is gone. My body temperature begins to sort of heat up or whatever it may be, and the fragrance, it re-emerges. It's like I've just sprayed the fragrance again. And let me tell you what happened before I started filming. So you see behind me, normally I make no reference. Those pictures behind me normally are Easter eggs. For those who are interested, uh, a lot of the pictures actually re reference whatever I might be talking in front of me. That picture behind me did have a glass panel in front. Just before I started, I was replacing the poster. Funny thing is that every time I replace the poster, uh, I always think to myself, this glass is gonna break one day. Well, today was the day. So as I was trying to put it in, I lifted up, it, it caught smash, and it, I just had glass everywhere, and pieces of, of little shards went everywhere. Now, I didn't want to get upset because I was trying to stay in the zone with what I'm about to do here, but I did have a physiological response. I broke out into a, a cold sweat. Now, in that moment, the fragrance, because I've been wearing Torino 22 today, the fragrance erupted, exploded on me. I had this cloud of Torino 22, of this sweet, woody, ambriness around me. It was glorious. I would recommend, go test this baby out. It's brand new, uh, I think it's only about a month old, but I would put it on skin, see how it performs for you. I would strongly, strongly recommend. Oh, shit, I've just smelled. No, it's not on there. Here it is. Just actually, truthfully, each one of these fragrances are just pure magic. Hope you enjoyed that. I'd love to hear what your favorite winter, ambery, oriental style fragrances are. I'm a big fan of this whole category. As I said, it was hard work just getting to this. All these others are gonna to talk to me later on. I'm gonna be like, curse you, why did you not include me? For me, these style of fragrances are all about cuddling up, cool outside, warm inside, being with someone that you enjoy their company of, and just smelling divine. Thanks everyone, we'll see you guys all on the next episode. I'm not afraid to